So far, an estimated 123,600 Rohingya have fled to neighboring Bangladesh to escape escalating violence in their native Rakhine state, according to a United Nations official in Bangladesh. Leaders of countries with majority Muslim populations including Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh and Pakistan have led efforts to increase pressure on the Myanmar government. Malaysia's foreign minister summoned Myanmar's ambassador to express its concern, according to state-run Burnama News, and Indonesian foreign minister Retno Marsudi held talks Monday with Aung San Suu Kyi, the de facto leader of Myanmar. Marsudi was due to meet with her counterpart in the Bangladesh capital Dhaka on Tuesday. Indonesia speaks not only on behalf of global Muslim concerns but also ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It feels a real sense of urgency, Hervé Limahu, research fellow at Sydney's Lowy Institute, told News Total. In contrast, Western leaders have have so far appeared reluctant to speak out strongly on the issue. According to Lima Hu, the Western world's attention is still fixed elsewhere in Asia, on the nuclear standoff in North Korea. On the other hand, people, particularly in the West, are torn between their affection with the cause of Aung San Suu Kyi and then the very gory reality, he said. The government of Myanmar, which is also known as Burma, blames terrorists for starting the violence. Rohingya militants killed 12 security officers in border post attacks almost two weeks ago, according to state media, intensifying the latest crackdown. The Rohingya, who are denied citizenship by Myanmar, are considered some of the most persecuted people in the world. The predominantly Buddhist country says they are Bangladeshi and Bangladesh says they are Burmese. It is the second time in less than a year that a military crackdown has led to a mass exodus. Phil Robertson, Deputy Director of Human Rights Watch, said while efforts were being made by the UN and through diplomatic channels, more nations needed to speak out. Countries could say more and they should say more. The government of Burma takes a look at these things and they count what people are saying publicly versus what they are saying privately, he said. Protests across world for Rohingya in solidarity with the Muslim minority, tens of thousands of people marched through the Chechen Republic's capital city of Grozny. According to a government statement, the protest in Chechnya, which is part of the Russian Federation, was attended by more than a million people. Protests in Chechnya are heavily regulated and typically orchestrated by authorities, said former Moscow bureau chief Jill Doherty who added that the protests could be an effort by Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov to position himself as a global Muslim leader. On his official INST Agram account, Kadyrov labeled attacks on Rohingya as genocide. There were reports of smaller protests outside Myanmar embassies in countries around the world, including Indonesia, Pakistan, Germany and Australia. Pakistani Foreign Minister Khawaja Muhammad Asif on Monday expressed deep anguish at the continuing violence, which he termed deplorable. Even the Afghan Taliban issued a statement against the bloodshed, using its channel on the Telegram app We similarly call on Muslims worldwide to not forget these oppressed brothers of yours, read the message. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was due to arrive in Myanmar Tuesday for talks with the country's leadership, including SUUKYI but analysts said it was unclear how big a priority the Rohingya were. The visit was scheduled before the latest outbreak of violence. As far as the Rohingya issue is concerned, yes, it is an issue for Myanmar, yes, it is an issue for the region, including India, and in the discussions with his counterpart I'm sure he'll bring up the issue, said K. Yehom, senior fellow at India's Observer Research Foundation. Refugees Trapped Thousands flee Rohingya refugees have continued to pour over the border into Bangladesh ever since the latest outbreak of violence on August 25, according to the United Nations. Speaking Friday, a spokesman for the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the UN head was deeply concerned and urged calm. Satellite images released by Human Rights Watch showed entire villages burned to the ground in the ongoing clash between Myanmar military forces and Rohingya militants. Refugees are bringing with them horrific stories of devastation and murder from inside Rakhine State. Everything, destroyed by the military. 
now we are without food or blankets. Genocide is going on there, refugee Mohammed Haroun told News Total. Just across the border, activists claim at least another 30,000 refugees are stuck in the mountains along the NAF River, unable to cross into Bangladesh but afraid to return home. Video provided to News Total by activists showed men, women, and children stranded in dense jungle, making shelters out of sticks and sheets. The human lives that are most vulnerable must be rescued immediately without delay, Executive Director of Burma Human Rights Network, BHRN, Kai Awin, said in a statement. We will rape you and kill you amid the protests, the BHRN released a new report into the methodical persecution of the minority Rohingya by Myanmar's government. The National League for Democracy, NLD, has never spoken up in defense of the human rights of the Rohingya and Da Aung San Suukyi's government has kept in place all laws and policies which discriminate against Rohingya, the report's conclusion said. In writing the report, the activists conducted more than 350 interviews over an eight-month period from people across Myanmar, including inside Rakhine State, where access is often restricted. Among those interviewed were witnesses to the 2016 Myanmar military crackdown, which led to an exodus of refugees across the border into Bangladesh. The military entered our hamlet, brought together all the women, and took them to the forest, two sisters aged 16 and 14 told interviewers after fleeing to Bangladesh. They beat some women very badly while asking, where are the guns that were taken from our barracks? Tell us or we will rape you and kill you. Others described the campaign of theft and property destruction that had been directed at the Rohingya. They tied people to poles inside the home then burnt down the homes, 13-year-old Win Ma told interviewers, adding that he doesn't know if his parents are alive or dead.